I want to start off by saying thank you all for listening to me today. I hope what I have to say to you, you will always remember so that you and your family will never have to go through the rest of your lives with such deep sadness and sorrow from losing someone that is loved and missed so very much. I lost my son Timothy in a drunk driver accident in October of 2007. He was just 23 years old and a new father. He will never feel the joy of raising his son or celebrating holidays or birthdays or just watching him grow into a man. So left behind is a little boy with no dad to love and care for him. Also left behind is Ethan, Tim's nephew, who still to this day talks about all the things they used to do together and the fun he had with his Uncle Tim. <coughs> Ethan used to tell everyone, he's not my uncle, he's my brother. Ethan was just five years old at the time of Tim's death and was with us when Officer Chad Wilmot came to our home to tell us our son was no longer with us. After that night, Ethan was so afraid of the police and the sirens that he would cry every time he saw the police or heard the sirens. But Tim's accident was just a few miles up the road from our home, and we knew something bad had happened because of all the police, fire, ambulance, vehicles, and sirens that went by our home. Ethan would no longer even stay in our home. He was so devastated from losing his uncle and best friend. It will be seven years this October since we lost Tim, but it still feels like yesterday. Ethan is now just starting to realize that the police are not what he needed to be afraid of. And I want to thank <coughs> Officer Chad Wilmont and Officer Gil Jameson for being so kind to him and our family. He now knows that the police are here to help people. <coughs> Tim also left behind an older brother and sister. Tim's brother, Jeremy, has had a very hard time with losing his brother. They were always together and loved each other very much. Jeremy will always blame himself for Tim's death because the car Tim was driving was a car that belonged to Jeremy's family. I'm sorry and he let Tim have the car. After I had told him not to because I thought the car was too fast, and told Jeremy Tim would kill himself in that car. I can never take back those words, and I wished I had never said them. I know these words will forever haunt Jeremy for the rest of his life. On the night of the accident, Tim was on his way to Jeremy's house to watch the fights on TV. This would have been like any other night, except Tim was in Otis with friends and had been drinking and decided to get behind the wheel of a car. I thank God every day no one else was in that car with him because he would never want to hurt anyone, especially his family or friends. Other people left with him, but were in their own cars. Some were ahead of Tim, some were behind him, and had stopped at the store. Tim's car was traveling at a high rate of speed, topped the hill, left the road, and hit a tree, only to be found by friends who came behind him and saw his car off the road and on fire. They tried to get Tim out of the car, but the fire was too much. One of the boys did get burned, but that burn didn't compare to the pain of watching their friend burning in that car. My son, I was told, was burnt beyond recognition. I never had a chance to see him or tell him how much he meant to me or his family or how much we loved him. There has been no closure for me. For a long time I used to call his phone just to hear his voice. 
He would say, hi, it's Tim. I can't get to the phone right now. Leave a message and I will get back to you. These are the last words I ever heard from him, and they are forever etched in my mind. April 12th was Tim's birthday. I couldn't celebrate it by making him <coughs> his favorite cake or buying him the biggest lobster I could find or just spending time with him. Those days are gone forever. The only things I have left are the good memories, memories of what a happy person he was and how much he loved sports, hunting, fishing, and most of all, his family and friends. Then there are the bad memories of how he chose to drink and get behind the wheel of a car and in essence, take his own life and leave behind so many people that loved him. If you are drinking, you don't have the ability to make choices. Because if you are drinking, you are not thinking. So I'm asking all of you, please think before you choose to drink. Don't make your family go through the rest of their lives living in the pain and wondering what kind of an adult you would have grown to be. Before I go, I would like to thank you all for listening to me today and also Officer Chad Belmont for always being there for my family. But most of all, for him asking me to come here today to talk with you about my family's loss and the effects drinking and driving has had on everyone who is left behind. But most of all, for helping me deal with the part of my son's death that as a mother, I have never dealt with. The fact that I am the mother of a drunk driver. And as I said earlier, I thank God every day that no one else was hurt or killed in this accident. And the fact that my son so selfishly took his own life and robbed our family of a life of happiness. Instead, we have sorrow and a hole left in our hearts that will never heal. So I beg of you, please think before you choose to drink. Don't be so selfish and make your family and friends live with this pain. It's had enough dealing with losing a parent or a grandparent, but it's just not fair or right to have to bury your child and visit him at the cemetery. If you choose to drink and drive, no, it not only ruins your life, but the lives of everyone you left behind who loves and cares for you. Thank you very much.